let's practice graphing our first hyperbola. Let's zoom in on the equation we're using here. This is it. Now, first thing I'm going to note about this equation is the y comes first. So since y comes first, that means these branches of my hyperbola should go up and down. So now that I've got that organized, now I can go back to filling out all the information I need to know about this hyperbola. First thing I need to know is the center. That's going to be at 0, 0, because we could do y plus 0 squared and x plus 0 squared. Same thing. And that gives us our h and k at 0, 0. So there's my center point. Next comes the transverse axis. Transverse axis comes from whichever number comes first. So that's the 49. So I do need to do the square root of it, just like I did with ellipses. And the reason we do the square root is in the equation, it's squared. So to get a by itself, we have to square root to get it by itself. So square root of 49 gives me a transverse axis of 7. Now, to do the transverse axis, I now need to know does this transverse axis go 7 to the left and 7 to the right? Or does this transverse axis go 7 up and 7 down? <coughs> to answer that, we look at what the 49 is paired with. So this 49, where we got the 7, is paired with the y. So that means that 7 should go up and down, because y always goes up and down. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 up, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, down. There's our transverse axis. Now, we know that it's 7 up and down, but just like ellipses, we need to also describe where this axis is. Not just how long it is, but where it is. So this line, this transverse axis line, looks like it is at x equals, because it crosses the x-axis, <clears throat> x equals 0, because it crosses the x-axis at 0. And at the end of our transverse axis comes our vertices. So you can put those vertices at the end of our transverse axis and list those as 0, 7 and 0, negative 7. Sweet. Now let's do our conjugate axis. The conjugate axis is the number that comes second, so in this case it's 32. And same thing as last time, we do need to square root it, because in the equation it's squared. Now, square root of 32 is not a very pretty number, so I'm going to approximate it as a decimal, which should be about 5.66. So I'm going to go 5.66 to either side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0.66. There's my conjugate axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0.66. There's my other conjugate axis. <clears throat> and we need to label where it is. Looks like this axis that I just drew is at y equals 0. Crosses the y-axis at 0. Now, at this point, before I find the foci and the asymptotes, I'm going to go in and draw my guide rectangle. So I'm taking these two crisscross perpendicular axes, and I'm going to draw a rectangle that encompasses them. So there's my guide rectangle. And now that I have my guide rectangle there, now I can do my asymptotes. Asymptotes go through the center, diagonally through your guide rectangle. And there's our asymptotes. Now we can come in here and write the equation for these two orange asymptotes. Now, this equation, if you remember point-slope form from middle school or junior high, might look familiar. If you don't remember that, we don't have time to review all of it, so you can just memorize it as is. 
But the easiest way to write the equation for our asymptotes is y minus k equals rise over run the slope x minus h. <clears throat> oh, almost forgot. Always forget plus or minus in front of your slope. Now let me rewrite that so it looks a little better. Plus or minus rise over run then x minus h. There we go. Now, h and k are your center point. The rise over run is the rise over run of your guide rectangle. So you look at how much did my guide rectangle rise, how much did my guide rectangle run, and just copy those numbers in. Now let's talk about why we have a plus or minus here. It's because we have two asymptotes. This asymptote has a positive slope, so that's our plus. This asymptote has a negative slope, so that's our minus. But the plus and minus gets both orange asymptotes in one. So now that I know that, let's go in and fill this in. Y minus my center is 0 comma 0. Plus or minus looks like I am rising 7. So I rose 7. And then I am running square root of 32. So I rose 7 in my guide rectangle, ran square root of 32. And then I have x minus 0. Sweet. So now that I have that done, let's simplify this down. So I have y minus 0, don't need, equals plus or minus 7 over square root of 32. x minus 0 is just x. And that is the equation for both of my um, asymptotes. Now that I've got all of this in here, I can actually come in here and graph my hyperbolas. Remember, they need to go through the vertices and follow your asymptotes. Through the vertices, follow your asymptotes. And we can double check. We said that our branches should go up and down in the beginning. They do indeed go up and down. So, so far, so good. Looks like the last thing I need to find is C to find my foci. So the equation for C is square root. And then we do the transverse axis squared plus the conjugate axis squared. So let's see, that's going to be 49 plus 32, which is the square root of 81, which is a beautiful 9. Now remember, your foci need to go inside the branches. So in order for my foci to go inside the branches, I'm going to go up 9 and down 9. So up 9 here, down 9 there. And there's my foci point, so that's going to be 0, 9 and 0, negative 9. And we are finally done. We have graphed your very first hyperbola. So now that you have done that one, what I would like you to do is fast forward to example 3. And I want you to pause the video and try this one. This is a new equation, but same process. So look at this equation, find the center, find the transverse axis, find your vertices, find your conjugate axis, find your foci, which will include finding C, and find the equation for your asymptotes. So pause the video. If you need to look back at your notes to try this, you can look back at your notes, but try to do this one on your own, and then when you're ready, come back and check to see how you did. Let's see how you did. So, first thing I found was the center point. So I found that to be at 2 comma 0. Then I did the very first denominator is my transverse axis, square root that and get 2. 
Now, because that is paired with my x, that means it goes side to side. So two side to side, and those are my vertices and my transverse axis. Then to find my conjugate axis, take the second number, square root it, and because that second number was paired with the y, it goes up and down. So now I've got my conjugate and my transverse axis. I labeled where they're at, and from there created my guide rectangle, which I could then use to make my asymptotes. So for my asymptotes, I have y minus k, x minus h here. And then for my guide rectangle, I rise 5 and run 2. Don't forget your plus or minus. So those are the equations for these two asymptotes. Last thing I then needed to find were my foci, which is the transverse squared plus the conjugate squared. Got square root of 29, which is about 5.38. I went side to side so that those points would stay inside the branches of my hyperbola. And you can write that as this 2 plus and minus square root of 29. Or you could just do it as the decimal. That's at 7.38. That's at negative 3.38. So that is all we're going to do with graphing hyperbolas. In the next video, we're going to start to talk about some application problems with hyperbolas.